This class is concerned with designing the, uh, the sales force. Now, issues in designing the, the sales force really revolve around the role of the sales manager. The sales force must be organized and designed by the sales manager. And the onus is on the sales force to generate the revenue that keeps the business afloat. So it's an extremely important function and it falls to the sales manager to design and organize the sales force in a way that optimizes their efforts and attempts to maximize the return received by the organization from the efforts of the sales force. So it's an extremely important aspect of commercial life. The sales team must be efficiently designed and structured to enable effective flow of communications between the salespeople, the sales manager and other functional departments and head office. Uh, in today's world we have many means of communications so that the, the sales team may be separated geographically by large distances but because of the wonders of modern communications they are still able to stay in touch and have quality communications uh, perhaps video communications or be able to exchange drawings or plans uh, as well as um, traditional phone calls. They're able to exchange those with the, the head office or with the sales manager or the coordinator for the particular product. So it's important that the team are in communications and they know what each one is doing. The role of ICT is, as I just said, the uh, information communications technology system is crucial in modern day business. The sales people operate as, as a team. They will have support, perhaps back at the, the head office. Perhaps there are researchers who are feeding the team information about the market, about the personnel they're meeting, about the companies they're dealing with, about even about day-to-day -day routines, about how to find their way to a certain company. Um, they will use online maps but they may also rely on support from the office and in the cases of emergency of course people in the field need to have support. So there is a very tight integration in most organizations between members of the sales team and indeed between the sales team and the wider organization. Now in designing the sales force the following factors should be taken into account. First of all, restructure and organize sales activity, not the sales team. The sales team have got uh, capacity, they have got training, they have got understanding, they're humans, they're flexible, they, they know their task. So the chances are they have got the skills within them from the outset. It's the activity that needs designing. It's where the team will be positioned, where the effort will be put, who will be targeted, uh, how much resource will be committed to the particular function. So it's organizing the sales activity that's important, not necessarily the sales people. The sales people uh, can be trusted to, to do a good job, perhaps knowledge of their sales experience, their history, their commitment and so on, that will be known to the sales manager. So it's a question of designing the plan which will optimize their efforts. The individual members of the sales team must feel that they've got some authority and some responsibility for the task. They must be engaged, they must be motivated, so they must feel that their, their contribution is valued and their contribution is, is important in bringing in the extra sales or in clinching the deal. So they must feel committed and to do that they must have some sort of freedom. It may be bounded 
because of the nature of, of what is required of them it may be tightly bounded but w even within the bounds the members of the team must feel that they've got some sort of latitude it's not an activity that can be programmed very tightly it's not a nine to five job this is one that perhaps requires more flexibility and the tasks must be coordinated the efforts of one member of the team must feed in to supply another member of the team the facility the resources to move forward the next step so the team is coordinated they are linked and they know what their contribution is they know what's required of them and probably most importantly they know how it all fits together and how each one is dependent on each other establishing a span of control is important a span of control means how many uh, employees are responsible to a particular manager so let's say a manager has got many employees reporting to him or her then that would be a wide span of control well with the sales manager looking at a particular task there may be a team of four or five that is the span of control but the manager must know exactly who's on the team that's the point they must know exactly who's involved, what their responsibilities are, their commitment, the time resource that's available, the resources in general that are available in terms of communications, computing, research and so on and indeed the the other resources of course like uh, transport and accommodation and food and subsistence and so on. So the span of control means that the manager knows who's involved, who precisely involved, what are the, the resources that are available for this particular task. As I said earlier, it's important to restructure and to organize sales activity, not the sales people. A method of organizing the sales team is by identifying activities and then organizing the sales people. So the manager identifies who's on the team, what their skills are, what their abilities are, what, their, what they can contribute, and then looks at what's required and attempts to match both. Attempts to see where there are gaps, where there are weaknesses, and where there are strengths. And activities and functions, well, these can include customer services, what services will be offered to the customer? Um, for example, what backup services? What information will be provided? Uh, and what, what encouragements or inducements will the customer be given to, to make the purchase? Market research is very important. A lot of this will be done in advance, but it will also be an ongoing effort on the part of perhaps the people back at the uh, the base back at head office where a marketing research team perhaps are in place they've got surveys they've conducted questionnaires they have done focus groups and so on so they're aware of the questions the chances are that will be asked and they will be able to feed this on to the sales team marketing intelligence is very important understanding the market is important understanding the concerns of the customers what's happening within the local area perhaps redundancies or uh, development new new businesses coming in uh, what's happening in terms of communications links um, new railways or new road systems having a wider picture of the environment within which the potential customers live is important so that the sales team are aware not just of the immediate market requirements but the wider market influences and this is important in trying to enable them to um, get uh, sales and to 
enable them to satisfy customer needs. Prospecting for new customers. Well, the sales team will always be on the lookout for who may become a future customer. Uh, it's, it's a part of their psyche. It's a part of what they do. They're always watching to see where there are market potentials, where there is selling opportunities or where there is marketing opportunities, uh, where there is the potential to talk to customers or potential customers find out what they require, feed it back, see if the product could even be adapted or modified to open up yet another part of the market. So they're always on the lookout for prospective customers. And looking at product and market development, which relates to the, the previous points, but sometimes the product as it as is designed will hit a large part of the market but other people other customers other organizations within the market may have slightly differing requirements so is it possible to economically modify the product and make sales and capture the rest of the market by slightly adjusting the product by modifying it in some way by altering its design or its its appeal in some way. So this will be fed back by the sales team. The requirements will be fed back by the sales team back to the head office and it's for the senior management to then make decisions as to whether it's a good idea to modify the product to capture the whole market. Of course there are issues about stock control and warehousing. It depends on the size of the product and the weight of the product. It may be the product has to be stored locally, so the sales team will have to look for uh, areas where are, are uh, storage facilities, areas where there are storage facilities locally that will satisfy the market. Perhaps it's not possible to make daily deliveries from the production center to the market. It's too far away. The terrain is not suitable. It's transport would be difficult and so on. So it may be that there are issues about getting deliveries and the logistics of delivering the product. So the sales team again will be looking to to try and make recommendations and solve the problem of distribution. Make recommendations back to management, back to the sales manager and through the sales manager back to senior management recommending that perhaps uh, some sort of outlets or some sort of storage facility could be acquired locally to enable um, uh, that particular market to be opened up. And of course a lot of this will be done by database management. It's important that um, information collected by the sales team is captured. The information must be captured and must be stored and uh, it must be available for interrogation customers' names, customers' details, um, their requirements. Uh, the potential for the market can only be gauged when a complete interrogation of a database uh, has, been, has been undertaken. So the information goes back to management and they can see the size of the market, the potential of the market, and that is important. Um, the effectiveness of the organization uh, is gauged by its ability to allocate its salespeople to the tasks and allocate the salespeople effectively to the tasks. Uh, having got a sales team together, perhaps a, a good team of people together, the sales manager must deploy them in a way which makes sense. It's logical and it's efficient and the the sales team will understand their roles and understand the logic of what they're doing. Now they can be arranged into formal and informal structures to perform tasks and 
what we're going to do is look at the, the concept of the organization to get a, an understanding of this idea of formal and informal structures. But within the sales team, there will inevitably be some sort of informality. As I said earlier, sales teams, if they're effective working in the field, the chances are it will not be nine to five. Customers have to be met when the customers are available. It's not a question of the customers pleasing the sales team, it's the sales team meeting the customers when the customers are available. So we can get this idea of the organization in terms of the tools of the organization, what it does, the production, the sales, the marketing and so on, the various tools it can rely on, the, the research, um, even, the, even the finances of the business which gives an indication of to, to what degree the business could expand to meet a growing market or not. The tasks that must be undertaken by the business to make the product, to sell the product, to generate revenue, to pay the bills and perhaps to grow. And the structure of the business. How should it be organized? Should it be organized in, in a tall fashion, um, a tall structure or a flat structure? Um, how should it be organized? And the people. Um, how are the people recruited? What are the attributes of the people recruited? What skills are required? What training is, is provided? What sort of contracts do the HR people supply? And, and what motivates the people to participate in the organization? So even though the, this, this diagram has got arrows going everywhere, I think every possibility is covered. In a sense, that is the way the organization is, because each of the component parts is important. Each of the component parts must work. Now, the sales team must understand this, and they must have a clear understanding of the importance that they are doing. They are the ones who are generating the revenue. But the business must have the tools, the facilities to supply the products and to meet the requirements as requested by the sales team. So the task is to supply the market and then out of that there are subtasks to make components, to have efficient stock control, to operate financially and understand the business and have good stewardship accounting. The organization, it should be efficient, it should be good communications within the organization and with the sales team and the people should be motivated and they should understand the nature of the business. So the diagram describes the modern organization. All the four elements in the previous diagram are connected and work alongside each other. The diagram implies that alternatives made to one element will impact the whole organization. Well that's what we saw. We saw that the whole four of them the tasks, the people, the structure and so on, all of them are connected. So changing one must inevitably change the others. So the organization is an integrated whole. In the sales department, employing more staff will alter the dynamics of the organization structure. More staff will require more tasks and more tools, for example more laptops, more tables, more chairs, more stationery, more transport, they'll eat into the, the budget a little more, they'll have to have their own budget, they will be more flexible than the others in terms of their working conditions and, and so on and so on. But they will have an impact on the whole organization. That's the point. They don't just uh, exist and the organization continues as it was before. They don't come into existence, the organization doesn't adjust. The organization must adjust. The four parts are interconnected. Now to restructure and organize sales activity, not the people. Continuing theme. Designing a sales force requires sufficient salespeople. Sales managers need to evaluate how many salespeople are needed to meet the business objectives. If the business wishes to expand and uh, sell a lot more and enter many markets, clearly it will need more salespeople. 
So it all goes back to the aspirations of the senior management. What do they want? What is the mission? What's, what's the objective? What, where do they want to take the business? If the business wants to grow, more salespeople will be required. If the business wishes to maintain itself and consolidate itself within one market, uh, perhaps a more stable sales team could be formulated and put in place. One who has got experience of the business, experience of the market, and they settle in and, and develop relationships within the market so that uh, it becomes almost a mature uh, relationship between the business and the customers. The, the customers know the product, they know the brand, they know the salespeople, and there is no change. But if the business wishes to grow, clearly it will need more staff, more training, and it will need to have greater flexibility in itself in how to handle that extra growth. The following factors really need to be taken into consideration. The size of the territory. Well, geography is important. If, if, um, if it's a very big area, a very big country, then clearly there are issues. There are issues about communications, about travel, about accommodation, about safety, about insurance, and, uh, and about the, the terms of employment. Um, if people are working away from home for long periods, working on their own perhaps away from home for a long period, uh, it's, it's not conducive to long-term stability people get bored, they get lonely. Um, so the size of the territory is important. Um, maybe the company wishes to sell in a local market or in one city. Or maybe it wants to base itself in one city and open a completely separate organization linked but separate in the sense that it, it's, it has its own um, functions, its own personnel uh, in a different city and it simply moves the products from one city to the next and that becomes a distribution centre. Could be. All sorts of possibilities are possible but the issue of geography, the issue of territory and the size of the territory is a problem. And what are the current number of employees? How many people are in the business? If it's a very small business then a lot of the discussion becomes academic. It's a small business, perhaps the the sales manager is also the person who sells um, to customers and looks for customers. So the sales manager is not the person coordinating a sales team. It could be the case that there are only a couple of salespeople in the business and they're simply linked to each other and give each other a call and try to work out the best they can. So it depends really on the size of the business. A lot of what we're saying here is conditional on the size of the business. And the product type, well it depends on the complexity of the product. If the company is making a small component that's very high tech, then the salespeople need to have technical understanding of the product. Clearly there are customers who may be specialists will want to ask specialized questions. So the onus is on the salesperson to be able to answer those or to find answers very quickly and efficiently. Otherwise the customers will get bored, they won't trust the product, they won't trust the company, no sales. So the type of product is very important. Um, when, when, may, when dealing with customers, customers tend to want it immediately. They, they want a response immediately. If the customers make a call to the company to place an order or to make an inquiry, if it takes a long time for the company to answer the call or the call is kept on hold or it's redirected to various offices, and the customer will get bored, will get fed up and will hang up and that's a sale lost. That revenue is lost. The company has lost as a consequence. 
So it's important that the business has efficient procedures to deal with customer inquiries. It must be efficient in taking orders and in giving the customer a good experience right from inception, right from the start. The customer must be made to feel that this is a worthwhile uh, inquiry, it's a worthwhile exercise. Each member of the sales team will need transport and that will take organisation and they will need to look at whether it's necessary to have a fleet contract to, to have a contract with uh, a major firm to supply many vehicles or perhaps um, just rent cars on the day or, or pay employees to use their own car or whatever. But that needs to be sorted. It takes time and the company needs to have uh, procedures in place to deal with it efficiently and effectively and fairly with the sales team. And the company must be aware of its competitive strength. The chances are there are other companies out there who are making similar products and will have sales teams trying to grab the market as well. Uh, so there's an element of um, competitiveness in the sales teams. The sales teams must have the best information, the best communications, they must have efficient travel and sufficient backup. They must have a good product, a product that customers want, that's based on market research, that uh, customers' ideas, their requirements have been integrated into the design of the product. And that will give the company a competitive strength. It's pointless sending out a sales team to try and sell a product which has got defects or it's seen as old-fashioned or it doesn't meet customer requirements entirely. The sales team must have some degree of authority to carry out their tasks. As I mentioned this earlier. They must have some flexibility. Um, they can't be controlled. This is not like scientific management where every aspect of their work can be counted up how many miles did they travel, how long were they in, in a particular spot. I mean, That's not the way it works. The way it works is the team should have some authority, some freedom, some flexibility and the team should be able to work out what is best in the situation. They're the ones in the field. They're the ones dealing with the customer. They can read the situation. They should have the skills to read the situation and they should be able to feed that back and from that generate um, a sales pitch which is acceptable. But it should be done flexibly. It should be based on uh, their knowledge of the product and it should be based on promises that they can deliver, real promises. But over and above that, they should have some sort of flexibility, some sort of authority uh, to work in the field. They must have adequate resources and tools to be able to carry out their duties. So they may be given the uh, they may be given the discretion to offer customer discounts or approving loans or credits or. Uh, so they, they must have some flexibility, they must be able to negotiate. Now obviously it depends on the product, the size of the product or the value of the product, it depends on the size of the contract. So, but if it's a large contract, they may, have, they may be given some possibility of negotiations, some percentage they're able to knock off the price or they're able to do something to to the advantage of the customer. The customer feels that they've driven a hard deal and they feel they feel good that they've they've got the best for themselves. But in fact it's all been calculated back in the sales office and the sales team know exactly how far they can go 
and they try to they try not to move but uh, if pressed they might give a discount so they can make decisions by themselves they don't have to constantly return to the management they've got some degree of flexibility that's the point now the coordination of tasks well a plan of sales activity must be drawn up beforehand they must have a plan they can't randomly roam off from the business hoping to find a customer they must have a plan they must have a target um, they must be well coordinated they must, it must all link together they must have targets they must have companies or customers or areas they wish to target and there must be a logic for targeting those and the team must be able to work effectively together the, the salesperson in the field must be able to link to the head office to the research people the marketing research people who were able to give them facts and figures and details and give them backup and be able to do on-the-spot research for them if required but also other members of the sales team must coordinate as well it would be silly for two of them to turn up at the same for the same customer or possibly even worse one turns up on Monday and the other turns up on Tuesday that looks like there is no coordination and the customer is going to think badly of the company for wasting his or her time. So the sales team must be coordinated. So they must, be, they must meet their deadlines. They must meet whatever deadlines are set by the plan. And they must work as a team. The deadlines are important because that is an area of discipline meeting the deadline is a requirement and it's important that the the sales team back at the head office the market market researchers and senior management and the marketing management they must know what's happening they, they must they must know if their efforts are successful or not successful and they must be prepared to intervene or redirect as the case may be as well as coordination there must be a flow of communications between the salespeople other departments and the management and the head office there must be uh, communications flowing back from the sales team if they're out of communications they're almost like mavericks they're, they've been cut off they've cut off and they may be operating in ways which is not conducive to promoting the image of the business they must be in contact with the business and any issues any ambiguities any problems reported back and briefings received communicated to them so that they know which way to to move forward so the, the sales team is the only link between the organization and the customers and that's important so the sales team are crucial otherwise the company will produce products that won't go anywhere the idea is to produce products to pass on to customers in return for sales revenue which will keep the business afloat and the link between the business and the customer is the sales team so it's critical so the sales team must have all the right attributes and they must be in constant communications passing back and forward ideas questions briefings um, building up the knowledge base of the market and of the customers so what we've got is the sales team linking to the to the company feeding the company back market intelligence and the company feeding the sales team sales information and then the sales team communicating with the customer and the customer feeding back his or her experience of the product 
what's good about the product, what's not so good about it, how the product could be improved. And that will be fed back, in terms of market intelligence, back to the firm, back to the business. So communications within the whole system is crucial. Now the span of control, which I talked about <coughs> much earlier, well, the sales, man sales manager must establish a span of control. They must identify the amount of salespeople, or the number of salespeople perhaps, working in the department and to what extent their authority is, or, or what authority they've got. Now, it's important for the, for the manager to understand the span of control. The span of control, as I said to you earlier, is perhaps five or six staff. So the span of control would be, let's say, six. Um, a large, <coughs> a large company, the manager may have a span of control of 50, looking after 50 people. And there's a, an element of organisation involved here. The manager, if it's a large span of control, the manager may put in deputy managers or uh, assistant managers and try and break up the functions in this way to uh, ensure that communications is passed on and passed on effectively. It all depends on the size of the business, it depends on the nature of the product, it depends on the size of the market. Um, I suppose the size of the market and the size of the business are linked. If it's a small market, the chances are it may be a small business. Um, more salespeople with more authority means the sales manager has less control over the sales activity. So there is a trade-off. when more salespeople are uh, employed and they've given, been given more authority in the in the in the field then of course that eats into the sales manager's um, power the sales manager will have less control over the sales activity <coughs> so there is a tension here uh, how powerful should the sales manager be and to what extent should the sales manager intervene or should the sales manager agree the rules with the sales team, give them authority in, in certain respects, and then respect that and leave it to the team to get on with the job? But the sales manager must be able to manage and monitor the team effectively. That's essential. It's essential that one person within the organisation knows what's going on. The senior management should be able to call the sales manager and ask for a report and ask uh, how things are in, in certain areas or what's the feedback in certain markets or whatever. And it's important they're able to go through one person. So the sales manager must be able to monitor the sales team effectively. Now the source for <coughs> a lot of this work, well, uh, that's a pretty good one, but a lot of texts and PDFs are available in this area and it's important that you um, understand the importance of the sales team. But that's all we're going to deal with in this session, so I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching. <laughs>